Hello again. Next I'd like to discuss chap Chapter 9's topic, which is Project Management. Project Management deals with PERT CPM. <clears throat> PERT stands for Project Evaluation Review Technique, and CPM stands for the Critical Path Method. Now, originally when these two approaches were developed back in the early 60s, uh, PERT was more for the stochastic problem, where the times on the activities were less certain for riskier projects. Whereas with the critical path method, the times on the activities were more known for certain. So today I'm going to discuss the critical path method, and in the next couple days we'll be discussing the project evaluation and review technique on a later video. So let's assume that we've got a project that has these eight activities, and we'll label them A through H. And let's, say, let's assume that we know the times for the activities. Uh, activity A takes two days, let's say. Activity B takes three days, and so on. Two, four, four, three, five, and two, respectively. And let's say we also know the immediate predecessor for all the activities. Notice that activity A and B have no immediate predecessors, so we can start A and B simultaneously at the start of the project. Activity C, on the other hand, has A as an immediate predecessor. That means we must finish activity A before we can start activity C. Likewise, D has B as an immediate predecessor, so before we start D, we have to finish B, and all the way down, C, C, D and E, F and G. So, before we can complete activity H, F and G must both be finished. There are three network diagrams that I'll be discussing today. The first one is known as the activity on the arc network diagram. This is probably the more difficult of the three uh, network diagrams to develop. The arcs, the, the arcs are, 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 are represented, representing the activities. So at the start of the project, we've got this first node here. We've got arc A, which is the activity A, going into node 2. Node 2 represents the point in time where activity A ends and activity C can begin. Likewise, we've got this first arc is B going into node 3, D coming out of that. Uh, node 3 represents the point that D ends and D can start. And E and D go into node 5 and G comes out of there, and so on. Now, this one can be a bit tricky. You might need to include some dummy arcs. For example, if we had a new activity, let's say activity I, that only had D as an immediate predecessor, we'd have to have D going into a new node, where I can come out, then we'd need a dummy activity, a dummy arc, going from the new, the new node into node 5, so that G could come out of E and D. Another network diagram representation is the activity, activity on the node. So here, this one is a bit easier to develop. The nodes represent the activities A, B, C, D, and so on. The arcs in the network just rep represent the uh, precedence relationships. So what we'd first like to do is figure out where the critical path is. It turns out that the critical path is the longest path through the network. So if we enumerate all the possible paths, A, C, F, and H, A, C, F, H, add up the times, we get 9. A, C, E, G, and H, add up those times, we get 15. B, D, G, and H, we get 14. The longest path through the network is A, C, E, G, and H for a total time of 15. That's, those are the critical path activities. You don't want to mess up on those activities and have extra days because then the project time will be delayed. <clears throat> Notice that the shortest path, we have six days where we can uh, delay. But... Uh, you're probably not going to want to figure out the critical path this way in a real project because uh, there will be maybe hundreds or thousands of activities and far too many paths through the network. So instead of enumerating all of them, what we can do is go through this procedure and calculate with a forward pass the earliest start, earliest finish for each activity, and then later with a backwards pass the latest start, latest finish for each activity. So to get, do the forward pass, what we do is we start A times 0, that's the earliest start, earliest finish is time 2, 0, 3. Uh, then the 2 is the earliest start for activity C, because that comes out of A. 2 plus 2 is 4, 
four, uh, F comes out of C, so that 4 is now the early start. 4 plus the time of that activity, 3, 4 plus 3 is 7, and so on. It gets a bit tricky down here, for example, when we're deciding, well, should we take the 8 or the 7 for the earliest start for activity G? Well, it turns out you take the longest, the 8 is the earliest start, because that's, that's the earliest finish for E, and both that have to be complete before we start activity G. And same is true here, we take the 13 and not the 7 for activity H. Assuming we need to complete this project in 15 days, we'll put that as the latest finish for activity H and do our backwards pass. 15 minus the time on H just gives us the latest start of 13. So we've got the latest finish, latest start. The 13 then goes to be the latest finish on activity G as well as the latest finish on activity F. So 13 minus 3 is 10, 13 minus 5 is 8. So to complete this project on time, the latest that we can start activity G is time period 8, so we can finish at 13, so we can start at, at 13 and finish at 15. And it uh, continues like that. Uh, for example, the 8 goes in as the latest finish on both of these. 8 minus 4 is 4, 8 minus 4 is 4, and so on. The next thing you're going to want to do for every uh, node in this network is calculate the slack, also known as the float, for each activity. To calculate that, you take the difference between the latest start and the early start, or between the latest finish and the earliest finish. Notice that the difference is going to be the same. 0 in this case, 0 in that case, 8 minus 8 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. So, the path that has all the zeros for slack, A, C, E, G, and H, is the critical path. What's the uh, slack here? 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1, so we have slack on both of those. Although, once it's used up, if we use the slack up here, it's gone. Likewise here, we have a slack of 6 on activity F. 10 minus 4, 13 minus 7, slack of 6 on F. So if we had to choose one activity that we were going to delay for some reason, we would probably choose activity F because we have the most slack on that activity. So but by uh, doing the forward pass and the backwards pass uh, on, on a real project, that's the easiest way to calculate the slack, as opposed to enumerating all the possibilities. The third type of diagram is known as the Gantt chart. Now the Gantt chart, these bars are based on the early start and the earliest finish from what I had on the, on the previous network diagram. So, uh, for example, the early start on A was 0, the earliest finish was 2, early start on activity B was uh, 0 to 3, and so on. These are all based on the early start, early finish of the previous diagram. We could also connect these. Remember that C comes out of A, so we could have a connection between C and A. D comes out of B, so we could have a connection there, and, and, and so on. In the second video, uh, I'm posting a video on Microsoft Project, uh, I'll show on there how to view these Gantt charts and uh, how to get them connected as well as to how to calculate the slack with Microsoft Project.